All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I apologize for being late. Um, I had to restart my computer. Google was not working fine. Uh, please invite your friends. I did not post anywhere yet, uh, not even in Facebook or anywhere. So please invite your friends and tell them that we are here. Today, our topic is about a family suicide bomber in Indonesia. Family. Yesterday, Sunday, a family members of six the father and the mother and their four children they attack Christians during their prayer in the church now this is a new style of uh, Islamic attack family suicide bombing let us go to hell all together. The religion which is called Islam is so peaceful and so beautiful to the point it's convincing a family of mother and father that if they kill as many as they can of Christians today, they will go to heaven. So they decide, inspired by the teaching of Allah and the Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, who is all about peace, as George Bush said, and Obama said, and Hillary Clinton said, and the president of France said, and the the uh, the, the German uh, counselor said, all of them they say to us that Islam is a very peaceful religion. But what they will not say to you that all those countries they spend a huge budget. And number one concern is security because of the peace for Islam. And the funny, whoever do those things, they will say to us, this is the wrong Islam, this is not Islam. As if it is Muhammad is not the one who said, I've been victorious by terror. The hypocrisy of the world today is amazing. Family suicide bomber, but none of them, as you see in the, in the title, none of them says the word Islam. It's just a family suicide bomber. I mean, that's it? This is what the news is? Is it really this is what happened? Is it just a family suicide bomber? Nobody want to tell us what family is that? Why is this family is doing that? Nobody is willing to explain to us why a family of four, they should be living happily in a country where Christians harm no one. Those Indonesian Christians are very peaceful, nice people. They never harm anyone. Never. What in the world will justify such an attack? And what in the world, what kind of teaching, what kind of hate, what kind of ideology will make people kill themselves to kill others? And others who? Women and children praying in a church. What kind of satanic religion this religion is? It's hard to believe. For the one is asking why my book is not found in the German section in Amazon, it's going to be there. First, they publish it always in Amazon.com, and then it's going. Actually, it's already there, but it's not ready for sale in the German. Um, just give it a day or two, it's going to be there. All the media. All the media, they will say to us, ISIS. Do you know what ISIS mean? What is ISIS? Why they are even using the word ISIS? ISIS is an Islamic state. You see, they come with the term or the word ISIS is to save Islam from being exposed. So now people, they think of ISIS, they forget the word Islam. ISIS is simply a wrong name. It's not even exist. And the purpose of this ISIS is not to mention the word Islam in the title. To lie to you. 
they wanna you see that we, we are in the world of hypocrisy where the doctor will not tell you what the name of the disease because he is he's a he's, he feared that this disease will kill him if he say his name you know what I mean the doctor himself will not tell you what the problem this is why your leaders in in all countries including the West they will not say that the problem is Islam you know they are fighting the wind without because they, they will not name the, 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 the enemy the enemy is the ideology not the poor Muslims the poor Muslims are victim of this cult you need to fight the ideology those people they are convinced to do that because of Islam they are not crazy those people are not crazy. You might think, oh, those must be crazy. They are, they are not. This, they are just being Muslims. This is the fact. Every day, a new terrorist attack somewhere. I mean, in the same day, you might find uh, a terrorist. Attack. Not only that, the second day, another family, just the second day, Another family attack a police station. Family. It's like a new uh, fashion for the Muslims. A family, mother and father and children. They will go to heaven together. They attack a police station. You see, fighting, fighting terrorism is not by fighting terrorists. Well, defend yourself from terrorists, there's no problem, because you have to do that anyway. But fighting terrorism is by fighting the belief. Otherwise, you are wasting your time. You will kill one terrorist, tomorrow they will, there is ten. And this is what we do here. And this is why we ask people always to help us, because the mission is bigger than what you can imagine. And this mission is going to impact all of you. The fifth of this terrorism is going to spread like fire everywhere for very simple reason there's Muslim immigrant everywhere just last Saturday a terrorist Muslim from Shishania who got a French citizenship what he did what he did he remember some verses from the Quran he is inspired by Allah he is inspired by the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him so what he decided to do in Saturday night, he decided to take a knife, the biggest knife he can buy, and walk in the street and start stabbing people in the street in the name of Allah, shouting Allahu Akbar. And still, they will not say that the problem is the religion of this cult. Why we don't see Hindus doing that? You see Hindus, the Hindus, They've been occupied by the British. The British, they took over their country for many, many years. And they did many unlawful things for them. But we did not hear about, in, you know, Hindus walking in the street, stabbing people in the street just like this, because saying, uh, uh, whatever his name, Akbar, why we don't see the Buddhas doing that? All those Asian countries were, were occupied by Western countries. Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand, you name it. Wherever this cult go, blood, shade, go with it. And need, now, if you are a person who don't agree with me that this is the problem, it is this cult, then explain to me why wherever this cult goes, blood shade goes with it. Anyone have an explanation? What is the secret? Why? I am an Arab coming from the Middle East. Why we did not see an Arab guy in America getting some whatever, you know, he's an Arab. So the problem is not being an Arab. The problem is not being an Arab. The problem is being a Muslim. 
You see, some people, they might try to make it as if it's about an ethnic group. That is racism. That's false. There is bad and good people everywhere, from every color, from every, etc. But some people, they try to say to you, there is bad and good in every religion. That's true and false at the same time. A good Muslim is someone who do jihad. A good Muslim is the one who follow the steps of Muhammad. And Muhammad was a terrorist. So how I can be a good Muslim without being a terrorist? A good Christian is someone who follow the steps of Jesus. I receive a message from Facebook saying to me, "You're, uh, you're, you are blocked from uh, posting in uh, in Facebook for the coming twenty four hours." Any anyone knows, guys, why? G guess what? Guess what is the reason Facebook blocked me from posting there? Because I say the stupid Muslims in the text. I mean, this is against our rules. You see. You see, when you are a Christian and you say the word is stupid to Muslims, they block you. Muslims in Facebook, they are posting beheading. They are posting Allahu Akbar Takbir hate speech against the Christians. They want to kill them. They want to find them. They want to kill the Jews. They want to demolish Israel. And that is not against the rules of Facebook. Me, I just said stupid Muslims. You can't even say the word stupid. Stupid Muslim is against the rules of Facebook. <laughs> stupid Muslims. Well, Muslims are stupid. You like it. You want to block me, block me. Who cares? This is the most stupid religion. A person who believes if he kills some innocent people, he will go to heaven and God will make his penis endless. What does that mean? That means that he's so stupid. A person who believes if he kills some Jews, he will go to heaven and Allah will make his penis endless and he will give him unlimited numbers of vagina. That is so stupid. You block me, you don't block me. Do your best. By the way, uh, we, we have a strike in Arabian Prophet account, right? Uh, I made an appeal, legal appeal, and uh, YouTube left up the, the, the strike. So, like, finally, YouTube is uh, is coming to their sense. So, my uh, my Arabian prophet, uh, we will start doing live broadcast on Arabian prophet starting from the next time. Just take a note, please. Each time I have an account, have like, you know, like it started growing fast. You go in ten thousand and more, etc. Right away, they start trying to take you down, but it doesn't work, you know. We have, we will open account. Who care? Our message will never be blocked, and nobody can block it. My books, my videos, and we are here to stay and to say the truth. Don't ever give up and let the devil win because this is the whole point of this. The first thing I thought about when I heard about this family who committed suicide, I felt I said to myself, What a poor family! Not only what a poor Christians they get killed for no reason, I feel sorry for them, they are victims of the filthy Muhammad. This is the truth. It was the filthy teaching of Muhammad who made those people commit suicide and kill themselves. 
thinking they are doing favor to God and remember what Jesus said Jesus says time will come and people will think by killing you they are doing a favor to God that is the words of our Lord and it's absolutely true they think they are doing favor to God and they think they are going to be rewarded because they are killing some Christians and some Jews we have countries my friend around the world they pray every day for the death of non-believers and the whole world is saying nothing about it the whole world is going to go in blind because everybody is a politically correct how you can fight terrorists you idiots the president of whatever the prime minister of whatever when those people nobody is forcing them to change their system how how the whole earth will live in earth we believe we live in peace when we have a children's in the age of five years old in the morning they recite a verse from the quran saying oh allah don't make us the same as the the, the lost christians and the cursed jews They say to you, we ban ISIS. You need to ban Islam. Islam is the problem. It's not ISIS. ISIS whoever joined ISIS is a victim. ISIS themselves are victims of Islam. Yes, they are criminals, but the, the question is, who made them criminals? Those are people born like us. They are, they are flesh and blood like us. They have a family. They have feeling. What made them criminals? It is the cult of Islam. This is the truth. But nobody want to talk about it. They want to talk about everything except the important one. You go right now and open any British website for a news, what they were talking about. They are talking about the football player Muhammad Salah. This is what they are busy about, a football player. And they are praising his religion because he is making goal. I mean, do you see how stupid the Western these days are? They forgot all the pain is coming from this religion. And just because of, I'm not against the guy. I have no idea who is he. I don't care who is he. But this is how silly, stupid people are. We say that we as a Christians, our Lord, he ordered us to love everybody, including the Muslims, and we do. But loving the Muslim does not mean you love the devil. We love the Muslims, but we will not love the devil teaching. Loving the Muslims have nothing to do with the closing your eyes and not to see the truth. People are being slaughtered, people being killed for no reason, except that this is a cult teaching hate and killing, and nobody wants to stand for it. Even your Christian churches, which is led by a bunch of cowards, they don't even dare to talk about it. How many churches this Sunday spoke about what happened? Nobody. You go to the church, they recite for you the same words you heard last Sunday. The priest he give you a speech the same as written last year they are disconnected from the whole world they have nothing to do with what's happening around us and the speech is a speech made and said thousands if not millions of time and repeated nobody is saying anything to you you go to the church the topic of today the priest he opened a book is written by someone about preaching he's not even making his own preach he is fake he is coward he is fake he is unreal he is a potato
We need a revolution inside our churches. We are not going to the church to read the Bible only. We can read the Bible at home. Jesus said, if you want to pray, go to your closet. I do not need the priest. Unless the priest is educated and he can teach me something I don't know. The church should be a place of education, not a place of a social club. And many of those false Christians, they make the church a social club. We go there, we meet others. Hey, how are you? How are you doing? How have you been? Did you see uh, John yes, last week? I didn't see him. No, you know, let us start some coffee. And that's it. The Christians, the Christians are the church. And the Christians, they meet in the church to discuss Christian issues. If you go to the book of Acts, what is the book of Acts? What is that? It's called the book of Acts. What is the where is the act of us as a Christians today? Where we are located in the book of Acts? Where we can find ourselves in that book? Guys, do you understand what I'm saying? Or I'm speaking from different building. Christianity is not the same as Islam where people they go in a certain time They go down they go up they go down they go up that like a robot machine. That is not a Christianity Jesus who is our Lord and our God he did not sit it in a chair and say hey come one by one and kiss my shoes He was a teacher. He was a preacher. He was a standing between the poor. He walked between them. He helped them he debate the Jews. He debate anyone around him. He is a person. He is real. He was not an idol to be worshipped. He was a the God between us, and he walked like us. So, if a priest he cannot be what Jesus was going to do, then why he is a priest and why he is getting paid a salary? And why he is having a nice life and you pay for his food you pay for his house you pay, you pay for his insurance it's a job my friend imagine you go right now to career building.com whatever website to look for a job you will find that there's a job for a priest it's a job people they have a resume people they have a resume imagine once i went to a church and i offered them my service for free as usual do you know what the priest he said to me? Can you please email me your resume? I said, what resume? I'm not applying for a job. <laughs> he said, yeah, still we have need. Uh, I said, why, why you need a resume? I am here with you. I mean, ask me, what do you want? He want a resume. <laughs> and I said, I said to him, if Jesus is here right now, are you going to ask him for a resume? A resume? What resume? Our Lord the Messiah to enter a church today to speak in the stage he need a resume otherwise he will not be allowed to speak hey I am the Messiah get down where is your resume I am the Messiah no prove it where is your resume? My prayer for all our brothers and sisters in Indonesia. I love you all. And I receive a lot of messages from those Christians in Indonesia in my account in Christian Prince author. You know, talk is cheap. I wish I can do something, you know. But sometimes talk, when it's come to religion, is sharper than any weapon. 
it's better than guns and war for this is what the devil fear is someone saying the truth you can go in war with those poor Muslims who they are victims of this cult and we kill each other that will make even Satan more happy that will make even Satan more excited for now is more bloodshed is happening Christians and Muslims killing each other we don't want that we don't want to kill the Muslims we don't want any Muslim to be harmed but in the same time we have a mission to make those Muslims understand that killing non-Muslims, not only the Christians, is not going to take them to what it's called heaven, is going to take them to hell. There's no way that a God who is a true God, who believe in justice, this is the logic, will take you to heaven for killing a bunch of children and Christians or Jews or Hindu or Buddhas in a place listening to a prayer or listening to a music or some group of people watching it walking the street or in a bus station or somebody is jogging and do sport and you go over him by your car what kind of God this God is this filthy God Satan love and enjoy the bloodshed it's party time family doing suicide bombing what will make satan more happy more than this mass murder and supposedly it's in the name of god and now god is happy dracula is happy a lot of people die party party This is why I say we are very short in the duty we do. After all what I did, I find it still. I am like, you know, here we go. How many people watching the video right now? Look at this. How many people right now they are with us? I told you about an app. It's called Life Me. I went there. A woman laying down in the bed. Laying down in the bed. She is not even showing anything, you know. And she opened her mouth yawning. And she looked really scary. Scared. She scared me with her yawning. The camera is so close to her face. When I click at that place to see why why there's a lot of people there. I mean, I, I was curious why. She have hundreds of people there watching her. But she is so in, doing nothing. She was yawning. She is not even talking about the topic. I made the broadcast in the same application two days ago. Do you know how many I got in it? Who can guess? There is a woman, she is yawning. I'm not going to talk about the women who are showing their panties. Those have like a huge number, like 30,000, 50,000, you name it. I got 37 people. You believe it? 37 people that's it you go you open your camera you say stupid things you get a couple of thousand watching you you talk about very serious matter sharing knowledge which they cannot earn anywhere and then you get only 37 people Do you understand now why if you open Fox News, they have four girls wearing short skirt, blonde, and they have a big fake smile and five kilograms of makeup and their skirt is almost showing their panties. This is supposedly a respectful TV station and they call themselves conservative. Yeah, right. People these days are very silly and very stupid. 
there is a guy with his name supposedly he is a comedian he do like uh, he have a show uh, let me see he was attacking a uh, uh, Trump wife for uh, for her accent making fun of her and then I say to myself I mean look Look at, at Fox News who is attacking this guy for he is being stupid. He is being stupid, but I mean, isn't you being stupid too? The world is full of, there's people dying, there's people getting killed, there's people, they are losing their houses, there's people, they are burned alive, and those people are worried. The American are worried, fighting about a comedian idiot show, making fun of the wife of a Trump accent. It's not right, but I mean, this is really what. Uh, so now the American, they are busy watching Sean Hannity speaking about this guy who did insult the president wife, making fun of her accent. So, I mean, this is the biggest concern for America right now. Is that a national security issue we should meet and discuss and we spend hours of time talking about it and debating about it don't you believe in the freedom of speech he's an idiot he will make fun of my accent too so people they are very this is how it is today they are very silly the more silly you are the more stupid the more you are cool the more stupid your topic, the more you are popular. The more dangerous and risky it is, the more nobody want to even invite you to talk about it. The topic now in England is Muhammad Salah, the football player. In America, the accent of Melina Trump. In France, the panty of the wife of the president. In Italy, Berlusconi is allowed to go now to election and his girlfriend is happy with him. I mean, look how silly. Look how silly is the interest. People are losing their mind. We have people who go to the church in Nigeria. They never come back out. They get in, they never get out. Every Sunday. Sunday became the day of massacre, you know, massacre, the day of killing. You go to the church Sunday to share love, you get killed. And nobody want to say who is the killer. An attack in, in, in Canada. Oh, this guy, he is suffering from mental issue. And all of them, they are suffering from mental issue. Including the one who report the news. But that will not let us give up. We are victorious by his name, my friends. And the reason for, you need to ask yourself, why those family, they commit suicide bombing? Because simply somebody, he all, he ordered them that this is the target. But why? Because the Christianity is a growing big deal in Indonesia. That is the problem. They think by attacking a church, and killing some Christians, they will stop Christianity. Trust me. People before you, long time ago, they tried to do the same. It worked the opposite way. The Roman before you, they used to feed us to animals. We used to be a game. People watching us being eaten by lion and tigers. And we don't give up our faith. And those Christian in Indonesia, they would never give up their faith. The same as what happened in Indonesia in the east of Timur. The Muslims, they stormed them, killing tens of thousands of Christians. What happened? 
the Christians of East of Timor today they have their own country and it's like heaven actually I, I, I will put in my in my plan one day to go to the east of Timor this country which is a very uh, uh, it's a new Christian country this area used to be Muslims those people they converted to Christianity the Muslim they could not take it how all this area Christianity spread like holy fire Christianity is growing and strong. I was in China and you will not believe how Christianity is spreading in China. It's amazing. China is going to be the coming giant Christian land. The Chinese Communist government, they are doing their best to stop Christianity from spreading, but Christianity is going like everywhere. The day I arrived to China, the day I arrived to China this year, it was the same day the Chinese they demolished the biggest church, or let's say a huge church in China. But that will not change anything. You cannot stop us by killing some Christians here and there. You cannot. Christianity is powerful because it's based on love, not because it's based on hate. And love always wins, for we are born with it. It is the gift of God. It is the fingerprint of God. It is the signature of our Lord the Messiah who said before Abraham I am and you cannot find that there is many Muslim terrorists who became a Christians today who used to teach hate and even kill Christians the love and the power of love which is God is love is amazing power terrorism Will not solve your problem Muslims it's destroying even your life I mean look at the Muslim life what life you have we go to the mosque they teach you hate you, you know the second you you preach hate the second you preach hate, you you, you feel like you are poisoned you are you are sick yourself you are not happy for hate is is eating you from inside you die fast even if you don't have any like a physical attack your health will not be the same because hate is going to consume you, will eat you. Hate is like worms who eat your body. This is why you see the Messiah when they ask him how we pray. He said, say like this, our father out of heaven. And right away he says, forgive to us the same as we forgive to others. What is the purpose of forgiveness? You see, if you want to know and you want to learn about Christ, Christ's words is very, very, very deep and they are very highly in meaning. It's not just a word. Forgive to us the same as we forgive to others. What does that mean? That's mean I am the forgiveness. And if you belong to I am the forgiveness, you have to forgive. Otherwise, you are not worth of my forgiveness. The one who don't give, why I'm going to give him? The one is a cheap, why he deserve to be given? The one is selfish, why he deserve to be thinking of him? The Messiah, everything he says is about love. 
forgiveness is one side of love it's a it's a step big step for love so before you earn forgiveness from our Lord then you have to forgive otherwise you don't deserve his forgiveness for you don't qualify to be a member in the family of forgiveness this is what the Christianity is about we are a family of forgiveness we are a net of forgiveness And this is why our family have a better life and better qualification and better quality and better happiness from anyone else. A person who sleep with his hate, he might have heart attack even in his dream because his hate will chase him even in his dreams. He will see himself killing people. He will see himself killing the ones he hate. He will not live comfortable. He will not sleep well. His hate will eat him alive. This is why you notice that when I speak about Christianity, I don't like those who divide the Christians between Protestant and Catholic and Orthodox. How dare you? If Jesus asks us even to forgive our enemies, how dare you to say to a Christian who loves Jesus, worship Jesus, he is willing to die for the sake of the Messiah, but don't worry, the Messiah don't want you to die for him. He died for you. This is not Islam. Yet you say to him, you will go to hell. Who are you? If somebody made wrong, he will not go to heaven. Well, I am the first one not to go to heaven. Who of us don't do wrong? And he did wrong. So if somebody, he kiss a picture, and because he loved the Messiah, he think this is the right thing to do, that will not make him a bad person. That is just doing wrong. But not because he's evil, actually because he's a good person. He loved the Messiah so much, but he is doing it in the wrong way. That will not make him go to hell. He loved the Messiah from his heart. Maybe he loved him a lot more than you do. Forgiveness is the key of success in life. For it's going to bring love and mercy even inside your family, inside your house, with your family, with your brother, with your sister. Hate is just like shooting yourself in the mirror. You think you're shooting somebody. This is why I like to see the Christians. They don't ask each other, are you a Catholic, are you a Protestant? Don't do that. Are you a follower of Christ? I don't care what church you go to. The Messiah said that from their fruits, you shall know them, not from their names. Names mean nothing. You can call yourself whatever you want. You can even call yourself Jesus. But putting a sign of Mercedes Benz in a donkey will not make the donkey Mercedes Benz. Don't fool yourself. As they say in China, he left as a donkey, he never came back as a horse. Some people, they think, by giving themselves a title, they become a horse. But the fact, the title make you even more ugly, because it doesn't fit. You see, if a villager, he is wearing a dirty pant, a sandal he have some mud in his face I don't see him dirty I don't see him ugly he's a villager he's doing what 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 is right for him to live to survive this is what he do for a living he go in the mud he work he get he dig in the ground he get dirty he get dirty to do good that is not dirty that is very clean and then you will see another guy very nice suit he have a perfume but he is a scumbag his job is to hurt people, to scam them, to take their money, to steal their money.
we pray for our brothers and sisters in Indonesia and your heart is our heart and we feel you and I believe and me myself I come from the Middle East discrimination make us always better Christians make us always better believers it is not going to be the opposite if you go to a Christian who live in a country where he is discriminated you will find that he is maybe 100 times better a Christian from someone live in a country where nobody discriminate him and he is more attached to the Messiah more than someone who live in a comfortable country where the church door open anytime and you can go and you're safe so that is going to be against the devil wish maybe the devil he is trying just to scare the Christians yes they get scared but remember at the end of the day we as a Christians and this is what the Bible teach that you can kill the body but you cannot kill the soul which is going to be with the Lord you know the Muslim they will say to you your Bible says if you eat poison if you drink poison nothing will kill you that's not what the Bible says that is about nothing will kill us to be with God otherwise the Messiah himself we as a Christian we believe even the Messiah himself was crucified and killed so the Bible is not teaching that this is the meaning you try to understand by your own no poison no blood no sword can kill us for we are promised to be living forever and we will not hate even the one who killed us God is justice and whoever commit a crime he will pay for it there is no need for hate Do we have any Muslim here would like to call me? If there is any Muslim would like to give me something about his religion to make me believe for a second that Islam is not a bad religion. Anyone? I thought we are made we were made being made perfect everything have two sides of it the perfection the perfection is about what you see when we say I thought we are made perfect in, in which way you have to tell me what is your perfection is about I thought we are made perfect the Messiah he said be perfect like your God be it's a project to work in that's mean you are not perfect and this is why you are given chance to be forgiven for he knew you are not perfect you see if we are perfect if we are really truly truly perfect then should not we should not deserve forgiveness but because God is all about justice he know that you are not perfect he know what he made of you he know for that reason he gave you a chance to be forgiven fix your imperfection right yeah no problem you can respond to anyone you want i understand you know the only thing I find around me of perfection is sometime how God he he's amazing in his creation you know because it's not you who is perfect but it is the creation of God as an example I just I will give you an example about how amazing what God he did if you look at a, a fly or a mosquito how 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 this insect fly how fast she move you can't even catch it you can't even kill it so fast that's amazing we as a human with all the technology we have we cannot and we will never have a, an airplane can do what the fly do 
Today we are able to fly, but we are far from even making a fly. So the perfection is what God made. But he did not make you still perfect. The perfection is how amazing what he made. You know, when you look at the computer and then suddenly you have tears in your eyes because your eyes are trying to protect your ears, your sorry, your eyes from from being dry. That's amazing. How you are designed, how you are made, how your blood system work, how your heart work, how your liver work, have everything. That is a perfect designer, but you are not still made perfect. You are made to die. That is part of the perfection of the design. You are designed to die. The Muslim, they say that this is about the atom. Yeah, it is about the atom. The Muslim, they can find atom everywhere. Actually, we are the Arab. We are the first people in the world who found the atom. Me, myself, when I was a kid, I found the atom in the street and I gave it to, to my mom and she made salad with it. Yeah. All right, let us answer this question about the atom. Let us switch the Quran. And just for a comedy. Comedy what we can say it's a sad comedy <clears throat> all right the Quran spoke about the autumn hmm yeah right this is why the Muslim they want to do suicide bombing it's a suicide atom my friend in a church a mother and a father they found that the autumn in their Quran so they decide to kill as many as they can mm. all right that is supposedly what the Muslim they say it's about the atom my friend the word dharra have nothing to do with the atom the word dharra mean an ant it is a very little tiny red ant. The Muslims are a bunch of idiots. <clears throat> if we go right now, chapter 4, verse number 40. All right. Chapter 4, verse number 40. Oh, do you see it? Surely God shall not wrong anyone so much as the weight of an autumn. What is the autumn here? This is a Muslim translation. The weight of the smallest ant by dimensions. Now, is the atom in the size of an ant? You see here, they use the word atom, which is false, you know, in English. But anyway, it says clearly that this is an ant. The word dharra is a word in Arabic for the smallest ant. What does this have to do with atom? Do you see how easy to get them busted? Do you see how easy? They made the ant an autumn. Suddenly the, the ant became an autumn. This is why, you, my friend, you need to get my books. Go to Amazon.com and get my books. You will see I am refuting all those lies. You know, it's very simple. Islam is just, Islam is just a collection of stupidity. And the Muslim, they try to make from something stupid, science.
you see the Muslims they hope that you will not go and search and read and you are just an ignorant who take it as it is Lou Lou this is remind me when I used to speak French before Lou Lou Garçon Lou Muhammad Lou idiot Lou Bardon Lou Lavou Lou Allah wrongs not even of the weight of an ant I mean where is the where is the atom where we can find mrs. atom this is about mrs. ant liars liars will end in fire do we have any Abdul not a single thing the Muslim they speak about science and the Quran is true all of it it's the opposite as long as we are talking about an ant what about the Quran says that the Suleiman he heard the speech of the ant have you ever heard of an ant have a speech ants they communicate they talk yes they talk all creatures they talk but their talk it's like just a communication way not speech I will show you I will show you one of the things the the, the Muslim they make as it at a miracle this is a chapter 27 verse number 18 as long as we are talking about ants here in Arabic it says namla حتى إذا أوتوا أتوا إلى واد النمل قالت نملة يا أيها النمل ادخلوا مساكنكم. alright this is a story it's a legend fiction story stupid story Muhammad he stole it from the Jews you can go right away search for the legion of the Jews and you will read the story of Suleiman and the ant this is a story repeated by the Jews for you know thousands of years. <coughs> But the Muslims here, they say to you, oh, hold on. There's a miracle here. Okay, what is the miracle, Abdul? We are listening. We are all listening. They say to you here, the word in Arabic is namla. Okay. Namla, the last letter in the naml, the word naml, which means ant, like many ants. The last letter, which is this one, ta, is ta u ta -neeth. Which means the ta for females. This is what they say. Okay, that means this 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 ant is a female. Uh huh. This is a female. Let us type a word female here. Take a note. Take a note. The miracle is coming. This word. This this word is a female ant. All right. So they say to you that scientists they discover. That the one who do the warning, the guard who do the warning for the ants is a female. How Allah he knew that. Now, how we answer this? Anyone knows? <clears throat> Anyone remember from my previous videos or books? How we answer this? Who remember? The answer is very silly and very stupid. In Arabic, we don't have a word for male ant. All the ants, we call them namla. <laughs> Any ant, as long as it is, we speak about individual, we call it namla. It doesn't matter if it's a male or female. Like, do you think really we can see the balls of the ant? We call them all namla. You idiot liar. He ants. Oh, ah, this ant have a beard. Oh, look, this ant, she have a ball. This must be a male ant. I mean, what's? look how silly. Look how silly. Unbelievable. They will not look and see how stupid this verse is. Now, this is the word. Namla is the miracle. They did not laugh that the, the prophet Suleiman he entered the valley of the ants have you ever heard of a valley of the ants is that a state a valley of the ants there's ants everywhere 
I lived in the 40th floor in the Philippines and in my apartment there was ants. And then I moved in. Because obviously the one who lived before me he did not do enough cleaning. Imagine in the 40th floor, value of ants. It's like the ants live there. There's nobody live there except ants. In the valley of the ants, an ant, she said to the other ants, hide why in the whole way in his army go and there's no ants in the way except in the valley of the ants. Ants can be located only in that area. Why? Are they preparing for invasion to be refugee in Germany because of the cancellar miracle? She said, all refugees are welcome. So when Suleiman, he arrived to the valley of the ants, one of the ants said, only one? I mean, look at this, guys. If you look at the details of the story, you will find how funny, hilarious it is. One of the ants, Allah is reporting, Allah, Allah Himself is reporting, guys, a very important story. You see, there's there's tons of Christians are killed in a church in Indonesia, but Allah is worried about one ant. She said something. Allah now is mute, Allah now is dead. He will not even send more messengers because Muhammad is the last messenger. All the news is not important for him, but this is important news to report. An ant, she said to the other ants, question Muslims, what happened to the other ants? They are mute. Only one ant, she is the ant who do warning. Only one. Suleiman, he did not hear the other ants. He heard only one. Why? Maybe she is so close to him. Maybe she is in his shoulder. And look, guys. Allah is a translating what the ant she said. The ant she said, and who is talking? Take a note. Allah. Unbelievable. How Allah he knew the language of ants? And you are telling me he is not the Almighty? I cannot believe that in the front of us we have the first translation of the language of ants made by the one who he called himself Allah. Allah himself is translating a statement of an ant. I mean, we should appreciate that. The ant said, Oh, ye ants, get into your habitations, lest Suleiman and his host crush you under the foot without knowing it. I mean, this is what make it more ugly. Even he don't even know it. And what make it more hilarious? So, Suleiman, so he smiled, amused at her speech. Like what? This guy he heard the speech. This guy, Suleiman, he was amused by the speech. Let us see how how uh, how Suleiman was able because. Ants, according to science, they receive, they, they communicate by vibration and by chemical. You can search it yourself. You will find that in my book with the reference. Vibration and chemical. Let us go by the, by the vibration first. How Suleiman was able to hear her speech, or let us say receive her speech? I think it was like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hide. Uh, he will crush you. Mm -hmm. Under the feet, yeah. Okay, guys. The message was saying, and this is how Suleiman he received the code of the ants. Mm -hmm. Can you slow down, please? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So one of the ants, she said to the other ants the following. Mm -hmm. Exactly. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Allah, unbelievable. And Allah is the best translator. And he translated that to us in Arabic, not in English. Take a note. <laughs> but 
what is weird that Suleiman he was amused with her speech hold on Muslims hold on how Suleiman was able to understand the language of the ants any Muslim can give me the answer how Suleiman was able to understand <clears throat> Abdul I don't want to I don't want to blow it I want, I'm waiting for uh, for a Muslim to say do we have any Muslim in the text anyone any Muslim can explain to us Hello? Hello? It's me you're looking for. I am the one who speaks all languages, including the language of the ants. But guys, the Muslims, I uh, once I was debating a sheikh, you know, I asked him the same question. Do you know what he said to me? I mean, do you know what he said to me? You will not believe it, what he said to me. I'm not going to tell you, to make you more excited. This, I'm doing this method by the way because Muhammad once in the hadith he said to the Muslims are you ready to go to heaven they said yes prophet he said are you sincerely ready to go to heaven they said yes prophet he said are you really sincerely sincerely ready to go to heaven they said yes 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 prophet he said are you sincerely ready right now right now to go to heaven he said yes 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 prophet the prophet repeat again are you really sincerely ready to go to heaven and all the muslim like yes 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 they thought the bus is coming and then he said to them say inshallah like what the heck all of this to say to them inshallah god is willing those guys they thought the bus is coming like are you ready to go to heaven are you ready to go to heaven are you ready to go to heaven and everybody is getting excited and then you say to them inshallah No wonder we have no electricity in the Middle East because we call the electric company. They say, Inshallah, tomorrow we will fix it. Why there's no bread today? Inshallah, tomorrow we will do it. Why there's no jobs? Inshallah, tomorrow we will open more jobs. The whole world in the Middle East run by Inshallah. So garbage industry, electricity is not working. Nothing is working. Even the wife and the husband, honey, why you did not work today? Inshallah, tomorrow. But honey, we don't have food for the children, inshallah, tomorrow. I told you, inshallah, that shut up. Are you more powerful than Allah? What's wrong with you? So here, Suleiman, he heard and he was amused by the speech of Mrs. Ant. Hey, Mrs. Ant, how you feel about Suleiman? He heard your speech. Oh, it was really weird. First time ever, a prophet of God, he mentioned to me and he speak about me and even his God talk about me. I'm very, really famous. <laughs> the famous ant? The God who mentioned the ant? I mean, what kind of a story this story is? God Almighty in heaven sending to us verses down to earth. Is speaking about a very important incident happened one day. Suleiman, he heard an ant. How deep? How deep? This is, I, I want to convert to Islam. Anyway, anyway, we asked the Muslim Abdul. It was a sheikh. How Suleiman he learned the language of the ants. He said to me, <laughs> Christian Prince, you claim to be knowledgeable. Christian Prince, I know what he was going to say, you know, but I'm you have to push him in that direction. Christian Prince, 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 you know, in, in the Middle East, we don't say Prince, we say Prince, like you go to buy shampoo, we say shampoo. Do you have shampoo? You know, Christian Prince, 
Christian Prince you claim to be knowledgeable and you don't know anything about Islam because this question you ask me now is a proven that you know nothing and I said okay tell me what is the answer now I'm waiting all this humiliation for what it's like are you sincerely ready to go to heaven are you sincerely ready to go to heaven and then we say yes and then he say inshallah give us from the end man how Suleiman he learned to speak the language of the birds I mean sorry the, the language of the ants he said to me because in the Quran my friend in the chapter of the ant it says that Allah he taught Suleiman the language of the birds and he was like ha 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 Christian Prince you've been exposed you got busted <laughs> you claim to be a scholar <laughs> and you do not know this verse <laughs> But this guy, he have no idea what's going on. So I said to him, Abdul, the verse in chapter 27, verse number 16 and 17, speaking that Suleiman, he learned the language of the ants or the language of the birds. You said the birds. This is an ant, you donkey. <laughs> <laughs> Allah he taught him the language of the birds how he understand the language of the ants and then again he, like he said to me uh-huh huh I said you just said Allah he taught him the language of the birds you did not quote for me the verse you did not say what number I am quoting it for you because I know it already. Allah taught him the language of the ants or the language of the birds. You said the birds, but the ant is not the bird. Um, 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 uh, mm -hmm. um, okay, I uh, I got to pray now. I got to pray. I will be back after five minutes. And since that time, he never came back. Hmm. He took a hike. He fly in the top of an ant. Do we have any ant in the crowd? I mean, any any Muslim? Sorry, a Muslim. This is a Muslim ant, by the way. Because the Muslims believe all animals are Muslims anyway. And Allah, he gave them Quran. Do we have any Muslim here in the in the bushes or something? So, you see, this is why I say to Muslim, say to me three words in text, I will give you a funny story about your religion, guaranteed, challenge. Don't even ask me a question. Say to me three words, anything. Three words, and I will find you something. You will be sorry for mentioning that word. This is why they don't want to debate me. They made an article. Uh, it says, if a Christian prince said to you anything, don't say yes, don't say no, because whatever he say, you say he is going to trap you. If he said even the prophet was a good man, don't say yes. This is how they debate me. That's why the Muslims, the only thing they want to debate about is like a trinity. How come Jesus is God, but he did not know the judgment day? They don't want to debate about Islam. The same topic they repeat because they, they, they are bankrupt. And we'll answer them once again, try, try five times, seven times. But all the stupidity in their books is not even their concern. What kind of God is God? Is that a, is, is that a cartoon story? Is that a story for kids? What is that? When you read the you know like the Quran, you feel that Allah is speaking to a bunch of idiot and he think they are kids. Ah. Now Listen to me. I'm going to tell you a story nobody knows. 
Once upon the time, there was a guy, his name is Sulaiman. And Sulaiman, he was walking and 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 walking. And walking and walking until he arrived to the valley of the ants. <laughs> and when he arrived to the valley of the ants, anyone knows what happened? <laughs> you know what? I will shave my mustache and my 20 foot beard if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> exactly what I'm saying. You guys, you say uh, it doesn't matter what I say because you are a Muslim. I understand whatever Allah he say we take it as it is blindly right Allah. Okay, thank you very much anyone is listening Allah. anyone is not listening Allah. that's amazing that's very beautiful anyone understand what I'm saying Allah. anyone don't understand what I am saying Allah. that's exactly Islam thank you very much so now when Suleiman he arrived to the valley of the ants he heard the speech of the ant and what the ant she was saying Anyone understand what she the ant she was saying? Okay, tell me then what she was saying. Hello? Tell me what she was saying. Anyone understand what the ant she was saying? Allah. Okay, who of you want to tell me what the ant was saying? Hello? Unbelievable. So beautiful religion and full of wisdom i mean look at the wisdom in this story guys don't you think the wisdom by the way when i open the quran i put a sheet under my computer because it's a drip a drip wisdom in the other day i have a lot of wisdom in the floor it's like the ants is coming from everywhere it's a sweet wisdom not only wisdom unbelievable this book is a truly book everybody need i mean after you read this how much how big that change will be happen or will happen to your life can you see the impact i mean this is a story every human being need when you read the quran or listen to the quran you feel like you are in different galaxy Time go, days goes, years goes. After reading the Quran for many years, still we don't understand what this book is about. Unbelievable, so amazing. Now, after we finish reading this chapter, the chapter of the ants, or this chapter here too, I mean, what is the benefit for this story? What we learn? I mean, what is that? But you will notice here something very important in the wisdom. Suleiman is grateful for Allah, for he taught him the language of the bird, but yet he got understanding the language of the ants. <laughs> I mean something really wrong here he taught him the language of the birds but he speak the language of the ants I think maybe Allah he installed the long soft, wrong software huh do you think Muslims that Allah he installed the wrong software because supposedly in the Quran in the chapter of the ants, I mean the chapter of the, you feel right away when you speak about the Quran, you're talking about the zoo. 
ants, elephant. I mean, spider. There's spider. There's chapter in the Quran, chapter of spider. You believe it? So in the chapter of the ants, <clears throat> but I mean, why I don't go to the chapter of the ants? I mean, what's wrong with me? Hold on, let me go there. Let me go there. Because you are missing something. <coughs> we are in the chapter of the end here. But if we go, if we go, let's go to verse number. Yeah, let's go. Let's go a little bit backward, you know, not forward. Because we missed some verses, we did not mention them. And Solomon was David higher and he said oh mankind Lou I told you guys I speak French don't I tell you Lou we have been taught the language of birds I look what the heck what the heck he been taught the language of the birds but yet he is understanding the ants mm -hmm. It says, it says, because does it say they are the language of the birds or I'm wrong? Does it say that? Hello, uh, CP to Paris, Francis. Okay, let me, hold on, let me answer this uh, person who asked me a question in, in the French. Let me, let me practice my French. Sorry, guys, I have to practice it. Lou, Lou, me, as an Arab uh, from the Middle East, I'm going to answer you in the French language. If you, Lou, think with me about this verse in the Quran, Lou, you will get a very amazing knowledge. This is a French now. We, we, we switch to English so we can translate for you what I said in, in French. Here, David, oh, sorry, Suleiman. He learned by Allah the language of the birds, which is like this. Yeah, this is the bird language. However, in a miraculous way, Suleiman, he understand the ants, which they speak like this. It's unbelievable. It's beyond imagination. I believe strongly that when Allah He sent Sulaiman to learn the language of the birds, I think Sulaiman he entered the wrong classroom. He did not enter the classroom for the birds, he entered the classroom for the language of the ants. Any Muslim have an answer for this? Because why you are making fun of my French? What's wrong with you? I speak many languages. I speak Chinese. Okay, I speak any language you don't speak. Okay, name the language you don't know. Any language you don't know, I speak it. Anyone here is Chinese? Okay, nobody is Chinese. Thanks God. I can't speak Chinese now because I don't like to show off in the front of a Chinese. You know what I mean? Ching pong, he pong, he hey who? Okay, I was speaking to you now about how Allah He taught Suleiman the language of the birds. However, when Suleiman He went to the the school of Master Ching Hong He Ho He, He did get inside the wrong classroom. Instead, because it was a Chinese, you know, Suleiman is a Middle Eastern guy like me. We read it from right to left. All right. Not like the Chinese upside down. So what it says in the Chinese, it was saying the bird, the bird classroom is next room. Suleiman, he did read it in the wrong direction. He says it says, or did it say it says in the which means the in the in the right side? <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. <clears throat> 
it's very, very good to be educated and to speak many languages. And me, myself, as a person who speaks many, many languages, I can't even count them. I speak even, imagine I speak the language of Allah, which is the only language He knows. Do we have any Abdul here? Any Abdul? Yeah, but we have to put into our consideration that those are blessed ants and they are Muslims. Mm -hmm. That's why the Prophet, he have a conversation with them, you know. And by the way, you need to know that ants in the Middle East, they are different. Like us, you know, Middle East, we are different. Like, look at you. Look at you, Western people. Of, <laughs> I feel sorry for you. Look at your face. <laughs> Look at your ears, look at your eyes. I mean, we are, we look different. We are Middle Eastern. We are pff, unbelievable. You know, <clears throat> actually, I was thinking to buy a mirror to put it in my bedroom because I don't want to look at anything except, like, look at me, man. I am a Middle Eastern. Unbelievable. And when I arrived to China, the police there, he said to me, <laughs> which means, why the heck a Middle Eastern like you is coming to China? Are you going to explode us? So I said to him, I said, I'm coming to eat Chinese food. That's all. The guy, he said, which mean, inshallah, you will eat Chinese food. And then they put me in a box and they took me in a car and they said to me, Chong Hong Ching you will eat Chinese food in jail. Like, what the heck? Why? <laughs> what I did? <laughs> this is a true story, by the way. You can find it in Sahil Bukhari. And when I was in the box of the police, an ant she came in my shoulder. This is a true story. And she said to me, What is really amusing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She said there's an army of five billions ants. They are going to dig a tunnel under the, 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 the jail and they will free me. Don't worry. And guys, I arrived there after less than 15 minutes. The army of the ants, which is my friend, the ant, you know, the ant I spoke to, and she's a female, by the way. I think she was thinking about me somehow. I mean, like we know, date or something. Because, you know, we are Middle Eastern. We are very good looking. I mean, don't even talk about it so the ant even could not resist to the point she brought me she was the queen by the way I don't date anyone I date only the queens yeah I don't date normal ants I'm the same as the Prophet Muhammad we date only ants which is the queen so and this is a true story anyone here from the Muslims you want to make fun of this story Once the Muslims in their chat room, they were talking about the Catholic Pope who converted to Islam. For sure, it's, this is a false, stupid story. And this Catholic Pope, he was an Egyptian. Have you ever heard of the Catholic having a Pope is an Egyptian? I never heard of one. If you heard, let me know. <laughs> anyway, guys, what happened? The guy in the chat room, like the chat room have like 500 people listening. He's a sheikh. He said, the brother and sister. The brother and sisters today, we have a brother who converted to Islam and he used to be the Pope of the Catholic. What the heck? The Pope of the Catholic is in the chat room with us now and he converted to Islam? And then this Pope of the Catholic, which is scam as usual, he started telling what happened. He was the Pope of the Catholic and he is an Egyptian. He found the light of Allah and he decided to read the Quran. And he converted to Islam. When he prayed to Allah, like Muslims, he closed the door. However, once he forgot to close the door with the lock, he did not lock it. They opened the door and they found him praying like a Muslim. They arrested him and they put him in a room. And every day they take him out and they order 12 lions to beat him with their tails, whip him like. 12 lions with their tail, unbelievable. And the Muslims guide in the text, 
Astaghfirullah, la hawla wa la quwwata. Those Nasara, the Christians, they are humiliating our brother. May Allah bless you, brother, for 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 all the the you know. Everybody believe in the story, you know. I'm telling you, this is like true story. And then he said, then Allah, He guide me for an idea. I opened the toilet seat. And I inserted myself inside the sewage. I kept going, keep going, keep going, and I came out in Egypt. Now I'm not going to tell you that this is must be a true story. I'm just going to show you something. I wish, I wish at that time I have those uh, applications to record the screen. And video that will be the most hilarious video ever. <clears throat> Yeah, I am an Arab, but it's not my fault. Trust me. It's the fault of my parents. <laughs> I don't mean to, but uh, things happen. <laughs> anyway, why you are saying he's an Arab? I mean, what? There is somebody trying to do something? Are you going to call the FBI for me? Each time I go in the airplane, they put me in the window. I mean, look how much they trust the Arab now. So look, guys, this guy, he was, he's an Egyptian, but yet he was the Pope true story and he was in the Vatican let us see where is the Vatican the Vatican is here all right the Vatican is here this guy he entered the sewage room here let me let me go down in the ground. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to go in the ground to show you. Let us guess which room he was in. This is the where is where is the the Pope uh, room. Okay, let us maybe here, maybe here. Let us put him here. All right. In the front of the the cathedral. What happened now? It's not coming. Okay, maybe here it's too close. Yeah, I think cars don't go to the close. You have maximum here, maybe. No. I'm still. Okay, maybe cars are not allowed to enter this. Uh, I never been there actually. Uh, which one they will go? <clears throat> yeah, here, here. At least we can point our finger at the at the you know at the at the at the room where they jail him. Let us say they jail him in inside that building here here okay actually it's obvious they jail him here because they will jail him in front of the ice cream you know so let us say they did jail him in this building and now this guy he dig and he broke the uh, the toilet seat and then he get inside the sewage the sewage go inside and under the city, as you know, as everywhere. I mean, this is very logical. And then this guy, he keep going under the sewage, under the sewage, and then he go under this because the sewage of Italy, by the way, is connected to the sewage in Egypt. At least according to the Muslim story. All right. Now, where is Egypt? Where is Egypt? Where is Egypt? Egypt is here. All right, look with me carefully, brother. Brother, 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 brother. This guy he inserted himself inside the sewage and he went from here, here, here to Egypt. True story. All of this is under the sewage inside the sewage and he came out he found himself inside the mosque in egypt unbelievable i mean he, even the direction he landed in the perfect place and he went out he went out he took a shower and the muslim they asked him subhanallah which mean like i mean let me translate to you what subhanallah mean I don't think you guys understand what this is a very powerful word. You know, we need a translator. Okay. Subhanallah, which is mean. Hmm. Now, why I am saying this is what Subhanallah mean? Because remember, Muhammad, he received the Quran 
in a sound of a bell so how a guy who received the Quran in a sound of a bell but yet it turned to be Arabic obviously there is like a code you know like yeah exactly and this is how stories of Muslims are truthful in the history of the Vatican Abdul there's not even once an Egyptian was a Pope and the guy we met him in Paltok the one who claimed to be the Pope of the Catholic obviously he was a Pope for Baba Ganuj I think Bob Baba Ganoush. Yeah, makes sense. I think he was a Baba Ganoush guy, and you guys, you get him there to make fun of the stupid Muslims who will make donation for you. Do we have any Baba Ganoush here? Actually, the geography of the Muslims always, always is funny. If you remember the story of Al Bahrain, you remember the story in the Quran where it says that the two seas will not mix. You remember the two seas miracle, man. The two seas will not mix. What is the two seas according to the Muslims? According to Muslims, and I can you know I, I change any Muslim to say it's not true. I, I challenge here right now, not tomorrow, not next year, right now, as we speak. According to the Muslims, Allah is saying in the Quran that the, where the two seas they met, and that is the following seas. Let me zoom in so you guys can get a better idea what seas we are talking about. I'm going to seize you today with my seas. Hold on. You will have a lot of seas knowledge. According to Muhammad, Quran and his God, the Mediterranean Sea, which is here, and the Persian Sea, they met together. And this is about the story of Suleiman, if you remember. Not about the story of merging the water. But according to Muhammad, uh, sorry, uh, uh, the story of Al Khudr, uh, Musa's. He was ordered by Allah. Musa asked Allah, if there is a guy, he came to Musa and he said to him, if there is someone more knowledgeable than you, Musa? Musa said, no. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> my friend, my friend, I'm so knowledgeable like Christian Prince. You know Christian Prince? I'm even, even Christian Prince, I am more knowledgeable than I could think about. <laughs> so Allah, he heard Musa saying that. So he said to Musa, hey, Musa, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You are the most knowledgeable. There's one, there's one, which means you are number two in the world. And guys, I feel so bad about that because Allah did not say it's me. I mean, that's not fair. So he told him, Who? Who is this guy who is more knowledgeable than me? Allah told him, He is exist in the where the two seas met, and that supposedly the Mediterranean Sea and the Persian Sea. <laughs> Muslims, where, where, where the Mediterranean and the Persian Sea they met? Do, 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 do we, we, we have any, any Muslims so, so, so good in geography? How? The, the second I say how, I remember a song. How, how, how could you forget? Get, get out of here! <laughs> I mean, Muslims, this is science. This is pure science, man. How Allah he knew that those two seas met? Let me guess where they met. Let us let me guess where they met, guys. Just to let you know, I was number one in my classroom in geography. It's true that I was the only student in the classroom, but that will not change anything because Allah He said in the Quran, "I am the best of the creators." But yet he is supposedly the only creator. <laughs> so if Allah can say he is the best of the creators, but yet there's no other creators. I mean, why I cannot be the best student in my classroom if there's no other student? I mean, come on. Just <laughs> Anyway, according to geography, I learned in the Middle East, which is Islamic, 
The Mediterranean is located in the borders of Brazil. This is Brazil here. This is Brazil. Hold on, hold on. This is Brazil. And here is Hawaii, the island of Hawaii. And here, this is the state of Zimbabwe. Look, even, even the state took like Z, you know, Zimbabwe, you know, Zimbabwe. This is Z in the language of the ancient, by the way. And here is where the two seas met. Do you see here that this this is a blue thing? Look, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me zoom in. Look. You see, when Allah he says something must be true. Let me zoom in Google. What are you doing? Why you are zooming with the thing? Zoom with Google. Look here. Do you see guys here? There's water. Do you see it? Uh -huh. Let me explain to you what is that. The stupid in the Google they say this is a lake. This is not a lake. This is the water of the Mediterranean go under the ground, and the water of the Persian Gulf they go under the, the ground and they meet together, they make love together secretly because their relationship is illegal. It's haram. <laughs> If we ask Zach and Naik, how the two seas, the Mediterranean and the Persian seas, they met according to your Muslims understanding, he will say, Brother Sitter, Brother Sitter, there's many things are hiding. And at the end of the day, Allah knows best. When Allah, he said the two seas, they met together and they meet together. And this is supposedly the meeting point of the Prophet Suleiman, Prophet Musad and the Prophet Al Khudr. He was talking about a point of GBS, but take your consideration. At that time, there is no GBS. It was the meeting place between the two seas, and nobody can see it because it's undercover for they are having sex together, illegal sexual intercourse. The Mediterranean Sea and <laughs> Unbelievable, true story. I mean, this is a true story. What's wrong with people? Why, why they cannot? I mean, look, they are so close to each other. What's wrong with you? Why you are not? Cons I mean, is that a geographic science? No. I mean, uh, this is not a mistake. This is a. Uh, it's true. This is very true. Look, look. Okay, let me show it to you. Here again. <clears throat> uh -huh. What's wrong with Google? Google is not responding. Allah is angry. This is the Mediterranean. This is Beirut. Hello, 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 Beirut. Min fadlak ya yinayi. Taradadadam. Atini Beirut. Akhlak al khat shway. So this is Beirut. Musa's, he land in the airport of Beirut. And now he is going to meet where the two seas met. And Musa was looking for the location where the two seas met, where the two seas met, where the two seas met. So he keep going, 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 he go going, 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 going. You know, he keep going, 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 going. And Musa keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going, looking for where the seas met. And here he arrived to this lake. But no, no, in the true story. Musa's he arrive here. Before he arrive, he is in the shore. He did not go in the in the sea in the in the in the Persian Gulf yet. He have a dead fish with him, and Allah he told him to have or to carry the dead fish with him. Any Muslim want to tell us what happened? Because this is a very touchy story. Actually, if you read this story, I guarantee you and I assure you, you will convert to Hinduism. For sure, not to Islam. <laughs> Unbelievable. Do we have any Muslim here? Yeah, guys, don't remind me of Nasrallah. 
you know the Iranian they 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 throw like uh, uh, 60 bombs at Israel none of them hit the target and they celebrate victory on Israel the Israeli in less than 30 minutes they hit 60 target of the Iranian in Syria and they made them she's <laughs> And the funny, the Iranian they are celebrating victory. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> this is the only religion celebrate victory after humiliation, anyway. I let it go, let it go. Let it go. I mean, what's wrong with you people? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Anyway, do we have any Muslim here? Anyone? Anyone? Okay, any two? It's hard to find one. Let's, let's look for two. <laughs> oh boy. Anyone? Any two? Any three? Any four? Hello? Uh, you know what? I think I'm calling the Muslims in the wrong language. We should use the language which the ant used with Suleiman. Mm -hmm. May they, may they, any Muslim, may they, may they. No, still no. I mean, what's wrong? What's happening here? Why we are dry? Why? Uh, we will continue the story of. Uh, of the fish of Musa's maybe next time maybe tomorrow I don't feel like talking about fish today that will make me feel hungry but for sure Allah is the best storyteller and all his stories are true and they are proven by science hmm. The Muslims they made a video that the scientist Stephen Hawking he converted to Islam before he died. But this video is <laughs> hey, Abdul, the guy is going to be buried in the yard of a church. How he explained that to me? Well, how is a Muslim he converted to Islam and he will be buried in the churchyard? I mean, what's wrong with you, Muslims? True story, yeah. Do we have any Abdul here? Come on, trust me. After I die, the Muslim they will make a video says a Christian prince before he die, he says shahada. <laughs> True story. Yeah. Everybody, everybody converts now. Everybody. The ant is a Muslim. Cockroaches. Chiton is a Muslim. I can show you. Yeah, so we spoke about that already. <clears throat> Do we have any Abdul here? I mean, you can find Muslims everywhere except in my present. Anyone? All right. Well, I'm not going to stay today really long. Guys, just take a note. Starting from this coming broadcast, which may be tomorrow, I hope so. Uh, we will go back to the Arabian Prophet. All right, we'll go back to my older pro uh, account, the Arabian Prophet. All right, so please take a note. And if you are a person who do not know how to find the Arabian Prophet, uh, let's do this. The Arabian Prophet. Search for the link. Post it for you. All right. This is the Arabian Prophet page. I will post it for you. Just be sure you subscribe. And starting from the coming broadcast, we will do the Arabian Prophet again. Good. Do we have any objection? Listen to me. If anyone have an objection, remember one thing. Always when you speak to me, I am an Arab and I have connection. Look who is my relative. Allah speak my language. 
Jibril, speak my language. I'm not speak English, <laughs> not German, <laughs> not even Chinese. Unbelievable. All the angels they speak my language. The virgin speak my language. Shaitan speak my language. I mean, so who are you? Are you kidding me? You cannot contact if you don't speak the language. God, angels, shaitan, everybody speaking my language. Allah Himself, when He do the blah blah, He speak my language. The birds when they speak to Sulaiman, it's in my language, Arabic. The ant, the ant, <clears throat> even the bell, the bell which is the inspiration how Muhammad received the Quran. It was in my language. Oof. Even Ya'for. Ya'for the donkey. <laughs> By the way, do you know that Ya'for was a Jewish donkey? You know that? Muhammad, according to the Muslim story, imagine how much they are proud about their history. He killed a Jew, and Muhammad, he stole his donkey. I mean, have you ever heard of a pro prophet who is proud about stealing a sandal? The sandal of a dead man. He took his sandals. I'm serious. This is what it says the story. He killed the man. He took his two sandals and he took his donkey. However, we have to be honest. This donkey was so special. Mm -hmm. Muhammad, he spoke to him and the donkey, he answered him. Anyone remember what the, what the question the prophet he asked the donkey? Who remember? Anyone remember? I think all of you are getting old. You are forgetting everything. I feel sorry for you. I'm the only one is young here. <laughs> I'm seriously very sorry for you. We are up. We never get old. You know, we stay always young. Anyone remember? Uh, yeah. Do you like females? The prophet he asked. The prophet he asked. Look how serious the question, man. I mean, and look how the prophet. He is worried very much about the handsome Yafur. Do you like females? Let me, I'm trying to find you Yafur so I can show you Mr. Yafur. The, the, the donkey which the prophet he stole from the Jewish guy. He killed the Jew and he killed, he, he took his donkey. Okay, this is Yafur. Take a look. Let me introduce for you, Mr. Yafur. All right. So Muhammad, he killed the Jew guy and he took his donkey. And now the donkey is in the house of the Prophet, peace upon him. And now the Prophet looked like Allah, he taught him languages of the donkeys, not the same as Suleiman. Suleiman, Allah, he taught him the language of the birds, but yet he understand the language of the ants. <laughs> So the prophet he asked the donkey between me and you do you like females seriously come on do you like females the donkey said no huh? no huh? wow how this happened this is a donkey is coming from different galaxy. He cannot be a normal donkey. This is must be coming from heaven. He is a donkey, but yet he is a gay. Unbelievable. Mysterious donkey. The first donkey ever in history. He don't like females. The mystery of Islam. You know, when I did read this story first time, I was thinking, first time a human being as a Muslim, Muhammad, speaking to the donkey, why is asking him about if he like females or not? 
I mean, what? What is the business of Muhammad and why he's why he's expect like was Muhammad inspired by Allah that the answer would be no? <laughs> because obviously he's inspired. Because the logic is that the donkey he will like females, and here the intelligence of God. Allah he made the prophet inspire him to ask such a question to teach us an answer which is not expected, and that what I like about Islam. It is a very mysterious religion. Allah surprised you always with His wisdom. His wisdom is beyond imagination. Mystery is the signature of Allah. You find yourself as if you are watching an action FBI CIA movie. A donkey. A prophet. And a question. And then the answer. Yahoo! Amazing answer. Make you feel happy. Finally, the prophet, he proved that he is a prophet. He was able to talk to the donkey. It's a miracle. And yet the kuffar, they say to us, prove to us that the prophet is a prophet. If the prophet is not a prophet, you idiot. Hell, how he can talk to donkeys? Ask them about sex. The question alone is enough to prove that the prophet is a prophet. Question alone. Mm -hmm. This is sound like a da 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 da. da. Uh huh. Muhammad is a prophet. Uh huh. You know. You know what I mean? He was really a prophet. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. If there is any Muslim here, he don't agree with me. Nobody. Look like all the Muslims agree with me. <laughs> I told you one of the nice things about Muslims when you speak to them about Islam, especially if you claim to be a Muslim, all of them they have one answer. No, Aman Khan, he says something stupid. The Muslim, they say. <laughs> Zakir Naik, he says something even more stupid. All the Muslim, they say. <laughs> Be that, he speak like donkeys and he says stupid things all the day. <laughs> Muslims always agree and nobody complain. Is that correct, Muslims? <laughs> Unbelievable. Now, do you understand, Muslims, why the Prophet, he spoke to the donkey? Okay, why? Hello? Why? Okay, let us repeat the question again. Do you understand why the prophet spoke to the donkey? Okay, you understand. That's perfect. So why? Hello? Hello? Nobody answer. They say, uh-huh. As long as you don't ask them a question. Uh-huh. Any beautiful Muslim here. Guys, let me change this picture. Otherwise, I'm going... Uh, you see, look at this. Look at this. I put a picture of a donkey. He is covered by fur. And I got a lot of people joining the, the chat immediately. Let me guess. Most of the people who joined the chat immediately, they were attracted to this donkey. Anyone knows why? What is special about him? Okay, the Christians don't have an answer. Let's ask the Muslim. What is the special about this donkey? Uh -huh. For God's sake, stop saying a ha. Can't you say something else? Uh -huh. But I'm asking a question. Don't say a ha. Uh -huh. Okay, the Prophet said, don't write the hadith. Do you know where we can find this hadith? Uh -huh. 
imagine the prophet say don't try it Had <laughs> shut up what's wrong with you the prophet he said to the muslims don't try the hadith and the muslim they wrote a hadith says the prophet said don't write a hadith <laughs> unbelievable super smart imagine somebody just said to you don't do this you do it saying the prophet says don't do it by by writing this hadith you just disobey the prophet oh donkey i love donkeys they are smart animals by the way people they think donkeys are stupid right uh, you know yeah they are animals at the end of the day but there is there is something special about them let me tell you this story and this is a true story not like the story of muhammad once we went and we did uh, like you know like uh, we were young kids we went to a village in the mountains and uh, uh, this village it's surrounded by a mountain so we were worried if we go far we will lose our way so the villager he said to us the following I and mean, <laughs> you will not believe it he said take the donkey with you and said what and what the donkey will do he said, when you want to come back home, just let him go and follow him. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> yeah, just follow the donkey. Imagine the donkey is leading the human because there's no way for us to find out where we are now. It's it's like it's a jungle, like wood, trees. All hills look like the same. So you just follow the donkey and the donkey took us exactly home. Even he took a shortcut. <laughs> So since then, I changed my mind about the donkey that they are stupid. Even though, like in this, in the speech of uh, figure of speech, we say he's like a donkey. Donkeys are smarter than those who commit suicide in a church as a family, thinking they will get virgins. If you speak to this donkey about the virgin from now until tomorrow, he will laugh at you. Even donkeys will not believe in the stupidity of Islam. Yeah, actually, the animals, they know how to go back. Uh, how? Mysteriously, you know, God, he gave them ability. You never heard of stories of a cat coming back after you throw it away, 200 miles away? How did she do it? Yeah. Now, anyway, the donkey, obviously, he is, uh, he, he uh, you know, he grew up in that house, and he go all over those mountains anyway. And in a, this is the fingerprint of God. He gave even this animal a sort of guidance. Do we have any Muslim here? What is the reward of a woman she do suicide bombing? The woman she will be in the end with the sex toy for one of the men who married her. You know, that's all. And Allah will make her 70 times more pretty anyway. But this is for all Muslims, women, which is very stupid. Because let us say, let us change this picture here and find another picture. Let us look for women. Women. All right. In the front of us in the screen, we have three women. The picture is not clear, but who care? Imagine Allah, he promised the Muslims, women, that the women, she will be 70 times more pretty. Now, let us say that this one, I'm not going to judge any, but let us say, like just take them from right to left by the alphabet. The alphabet is from right to left. Ah, I forgot I'm in the Middle Eastern. Okay, here is the alphabet. A, B, C. Let us say that A is twice more beautiful than B. Twice. And B is twice more beautiful than C. And then Allah, He made them 
or let us say let us make make the first one three times more beautiful just to make it more clear a is three times more beautiful than B B is twice twice more beautiful than C now all of them Allah will increase their beauty 70 times that's mean the first one Allah will increase her beauty 70 X three already she is three times pretty than others right okay 70 x3 that will be what 210 more beauty is that correct all right and then <clears throat> the second one is going to be seven that's going to be twice more she is already twice and Allah will increase her beauty 70 times so that means 70 x2 that's mean she is her her rank of a beauty is 140 the poor girl here see she will get 70 times more pretty So guess what? You were you were ugly in earth, you're still ugly in heaven. Nothing changed. Because all the women, their beauty increased 70 times. So what the different? Nothing. This poor woman, Allah he made her 70 times more pretty. Yes. But nothing changed because her friend now is 140 times more pretty. Her friend is 210 more pretty. I mean, how stupid Allah is. So, what the benefit of being 70 times more pretty? <laughs> Unbelievable. I know. I know that's you, but you see, Muhammad, he is a man of deception. He knew that women like to be pretty, so he promised them what they like. You know, he promised them what he what they like. The man he likes sex, he likes to drink, he likes to be worshipped, he likes to be uh, you know, women all over him. So he promised him exactly what he liked, he promised everyone what he liked. Oh, you don't see the screen. Sorry, guys. Man, oh man, I'm typing all this time and you don't see the screen. I think the end is the, it is the end fault. The end did not inspire me. Sorry. Like good, you told me. I, I was I, I never I did not notice because this is in my background. You know, I don't see really my my screen is busy with ants. See, I told you, Allah, He made me seventy times more more smart. <laughs> to the point, I did not notice that it's not coming and, and screen unbelievable. Do we have any Muslim here? He have a comment or something to say? Anyone? Why your God is so smart? I mean, why Allah is so crazy smart? Unbelievable! It's too much. If. Let me take off those pictures, otherwise those females, they will say their pictures, and this girl, she will sue me for saying that she is number C. She will say, what? I am number C. Are you blind? What? <laughs> me? I am C? I am E. And this woman, she will thank me. She said, oh, you made me A. I did not make you A. Hello, don't be stupid. You are. You, we, we took it from the left to the right. No, there's no there's no discriminations here. <laughs> oh boy. Oh. <clears throat> anyway, I think we had enough for today. Guys, don't forget that tomorrow. I hope tomorrow I will do broadcast. Uh I will do my best. But if we do it, we are going to be in the Arabian Prophet. Kabich. Take a note. Anyone did not hear it? 
in the Arabian profit account if you don't know where is the Arabian profit account here we go let me copy the link for you please subscribe here and subscribe because sometimes we switch when we have a technical difficulty technical between quote and quote technical it's not because Allah he made it 70 times more us for us easier there or harder no it is technical difficulty so should I repeat it 70 times that's we are going to be in the Arabian prophet I think this is not not needed right so anyway thank you guys for being here may the Lord bless you all and put in your prayer our brothers and sisters the Christians in Indonesia they need our prayer and uh, I'm sure that the Lord is with them and they, they, they have a special blessing to be Christians in the land where Christianity is not welcome for they will sacrifice as the Lord he said time will come and they will kill you and they think by killing you they are doing favor to God and all his words come to be true and this is exactly what happened since the beginning of Christianity so our heart with them our prayer with them and we believe they are strong enough and Islam is very weak and this is why Islam is going to the violence this is a very clear sign of weakness not strength violence is a weakness it's when you cannot answer questions you kill the one who ask it it's you you cannot explain how stupid you are so you try to mute the one who asked you and expose your stupidity but that will not work that will not work Christianity is spreading everywhere and I cannot wait I hope I will live before I die and I will celebrate celebrate with my brothers in China that China is a free Christian country because China is coming to Christ as you will not believe it and when China come to Christ all of it Indonesia will follow for they are very close and they are very much connected in languages and history in many things so and inside Indonesia Christianity is spreading like fire and this is why they are attacking churches trying to think if they attack churches they can stop Christianity from a growth the same as they did in Malaysia the Muslim they made a law that a Christian cannot use the word Allah when he speak about God but the Muslims always in America try to say to us that Allah is just a word mean God and it's the same as the God of the Christians no the fact is not and this is false but because the Muslims are people who serve propaganda and agenda so Allah is good for them to be used by you in America but it is forbidden for you to be used in Malaysia because why they were thinking why a lot of Muslims live in Islam and convert in those churches maybe because those missionaries when they speak to Muslims they use the word Allah which I don't agree with it but I understand why they are doing that for them they made the, the mean by using the word Allah as God but this is wrong because Allah is not a word mean God it is a name however they forbid the Christians from using that word hoping that they can stop Christianity from growing but Christianity is growing in Malaysia growing in Indonesia growing in all Islamic countries and nobody can stop it India is coming to Christ Indonesia coming to Christ China is coming to Christ east of Timur it used to be 100% non-muslim non-christians non, 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 non and now became a christian country almost 100 percent which is part of indonesia the muslims they can make a million video about a person who converted to islam the same person they make tons of videos try to get you an idea that everybody is converting to islam the fact it is the opposite when people leave islam they don't make videos for islam is dangerous cult they kill the one who leave islam this is why you will not see many speaking of them speaking what happened their experience but the fact it is the opposite people in the Middle East in Asia they are leaving this cult left and right Africa actually yes Africa Islam used to be a major religion in Africa now the Muslims in Africa is not even 10 percent in the Jazeera TV they have a program you can search it on YouTube. Uh, actually, I am the one who recorded. Uh, otherwise, the Jazeera they, they took it down from their website. 
they were talking about 16,000 Muslims leaving Islam a day in Africa but they claim that the Muslims are leaving Islam in Africa because the Christians are feeding them mm -hmm. who's holding you to feed the Muslims Muslims you have all the oil in the world you Muslims you have billionaires who can feed all the African who is holding you from feeding the African the Muslims they have money to build a church in Manhattan costing sorry a mosque in Manhattan costing 100 million dollar what about saving those 100 million dollars and save the life of 25,000 child dying every month in Somalia alone from hunger and war they have money but not for the Muslims they have money to build a beautiful mosque for they are hypocrites who is the one is feeding the Syrian refugee how much Saudi Arabia gave how much Emirat gave the one who's giving the money is the Western where is the Muslims where's your money hypocrites and liars thank you very much for being here with me guys and until I see you I hope I hope tomorrow God is winning and the Arabian prophet account until I see you soon again as always we close and we say Christ is Lord Islam is false and see you soon again God bless bye bye